Hello everybody, this is Corbin from Zoco Marketing and in today's video we are talking about how to set up your very first campaign in TikTok Ads Manager. Uh, specifically, we're going to be going over how to set up a conversion campaign. Uh, so we're going to jump right into this. Um, first things first, if you have not set up your first, if you have not set up the TikTok pixel uh, and you have not set up your conversion action, you need to do that before watching this video. I will link those down below in the description. I have a video that talks about how to place the TikTok pixel on your website and how to uh, set up the conversion action for a lead form. Uh, so if, if you haven't done that, go down and watch those videos first and then come back to this one. So we are starting inside of the TikTok Ads Manager and we're gonna click on Campaign and get this thing started. So here we are and we're gonna click on create right here. And uh, for those who are familiar with Facebook, this is set up very similar to how Facebook has their, uh, their ads manager set up. So we have different objectives that we're going for. 99% um, of the time I would recommend either going for traffic or consideration, unless you are a big, you know, uh, a big brand like Coca-Cola going for video views or reach, or if you have an app, go for app installs. If you do have the conversion pixel set up on your website, then I would definitely recommend going this route. This is basically telling the TikTok algorithm that you want to find people who are actually going to take action on your website instead of just driving traffic um, there. So we're going to go with conversion for this uh, objective. And uh, we can give our campaign a name. The, the naming convention that I like to use is I like to um, call it by the objective that it is, so conversion. And we are going to go for a low CPC here. We're going to be testing CPC here, different CPC. So conversion CPC. Um, here you can do uh, split, split test creating. I'm not going to do it in this case. Um, we only have a few ads that we're going to be running. So I don't have a ton to split test and create, but you can uh, have that option on there. So then we're going to hit continue. All right, and you can give your ad group a name. Uh, I, I definitely recommend this to just be more descriptive on to what exactly you're doing. Uh, we're going to come back to this and name it. Uh, now, the placements. This is something that's very important for TikTok. It's important for Facebook and all the other platforms as well, but especially here in TikTok, <clears throat> these other networks, um, most likely you do not want to show ads um, there. As you can see, most of these are only available in, uh, you know, this one's only available in India. This one's only available in Japan, Korea, Taiwan. Um, so if you have, if you're trying to hit people in those areas, then you can leave these uh, checked. But if you only want to hit people in certain, uh, you know, in the U.S. or U.K., different places like that, then you just want to do TikTok uh, platform. Okay, and then right here is where you're going to put in the website that you are um, running ads for. As I mentioned before, if you have not. Uh, set up the conversion pixel. You need to go and click on the link down below and set that up before going to this step. But um, this is where we're at right now. So we hit enter and then it finds our pixel for us once you've um, selected your website. So this is the, the pixel that we set up and then we need to select the correct event. So we set up a page view event um, and then we also uh, set up the form submit, which is what we really care about because that's uh, actually when somebody gives us their information. So that's the conversion goal that we want to optimize towards. Next, we have the display name. So name this uh, your actual brand name. You're going to want to put that in there. That's what that means. Basically translates to, you can see here, um, this will display in your ads as your brand identity. So whatever you want your brand identity to be, which would I assume would want, you'd want to be your brand, put that in there. Um, we are going to upload a file image for our logo. All right, next we have the uh, the section for user comments and video downloads. I highly recommend that you keep user comments enabled. Um, TikTok, a big factor on how they show your video out is the amount of engagement that that video is getting. And so if you turn off those comments, you're basically just giving yourself um, a disadvantage to people who have those comments running. So definitely leave those enabled. Um, video downloads, you can allow people to download your video. Uh, if you'd like, in this case, I'm not going to allow people to do that. Uh, just, just to keep brand consistently consistency. So somebody doesn't download it and splice it up for whatever reason. If you're drop shipping a product, you might want to do this so that, uh, people drop shipping can't steal your video. Um, definitely keep that on check. All right, here we have, uh, automated, automated creative options. This is actually really cool. Um, this is something that Facebook also, uh, allows you to do, but it's basically, taking a bunch of content, letting TikTok splice it how they need, and then optimizing that content for your users. 
as I mentioned, we are, uh, this client is just getting started off with TikTok ads, so they don't have a ton of assets. So I'm only gonna be testing two different variants and we don't have a ton to spice up, but I do recommend this option for uh, people who have a lot of assets. This is a great way to just test different things and give TikTok a little bit of control into uh, getting the best performance for you. Um, audience targeting. Uh, this is where you can upload some of your lists from a CRM or different uh, databases that you have. Um, to be honest, I haven't experimented with this a ton yet, and I've heard it's kind of difficult with how TikTok has had it set up. So I can't really speak to it as much uh, in my personal experience, but um, something that you could look into if you wanted to export it from a CRM or some other database. Demographics, we're gonna keep this in the United States. Um, we're gonna be targeting male and female. Uh, this is gonna be for probably people 18, we don't want to hit 13 to 17 year old. This doesn't really apply to them. This is a software. So we're going to be going um, higher ages here. People who are 18 plus, and actually we're going to keep it at 25 plus. Uh, languages, we're not going to leave a limit there. And here we have the interest in behavior. This is kind of the meat of any uh, marketing platform where you're actually going to see how you target the users. Um, TikTok has some really cool features and in my opinion, a little bit of setbacks in the interest in targeting, but I'm sure it's very new. It will continue to only get better as time goes on. Where I think there are limitations is here in the interest. There aren't a ton of options, as you can see right here, maybe there's 30 or so with a few drop dropdowns um, for interest targeting. In our case, we are gonna be targeting people who are interested in tech and electronics. Um, uh, and that's just for what we're marketing in this, this situation. Uh, definitely, you're gonna wanna go through and look at this list yourself for whatever product or service you're marketing and see which audiences might match up with yours. And of course, I always recommend targeting multi or testing multiple audiences as you go along. So the interest targeting is just okay. In my opinion, it's still a little weak. TikTok will get better at this, I assume, as they continue to grow the platform and improve this as manager figure. It's, it's very new, only months old. Um, uh, but where it is winning and where I'm loving it, especially from an e-commerce standpoint, if you run an e-commerce store, is this behavior right here. This is super cool. What you can do is you can tell TikTok, I wanna find people who have watched the whole video, of watched the video, liked, commented, and shared things that are related to, um, if we're going down here to fashion, there's outfits, for instance, that will be huge for any e-commerce person out there. I've run this audience and it has been uh, awesome. If you sell t-shirts, hats, uh, pants, skirts, swimsuits, anything like that, this audience is gonna be awesome for you guys to utilize because um, it's basically just saying anybody who's interacted with these videos and liked them, watched them all the way through, which means if you have a killer ad that speaks to that, to that video topic, then uh, it will do really well. Unfortunately, in this case, we don't have uh, an e-commerce product, and so we are marketing a software, so we don't have that target option, but I did wanna make it aware to all of you guys. And then you can select a time period that, that includes so it's within the last seven days they've been looking at these or the last 15 days. I think very powerful, and I've seen it work very well in, in uh, accounts that I've run. So, but we're gonna exit out of that, like I said, because we're not running it for this example, and we're gonna uncheck all these. All right, so category targeting, very powerful. Look into it if you're in an e-commerce store or if one of the categories fits into what you're marketing. Device, we're gonna leave that as is. And then for budget, um, this you do need to run at least $20 a day, unless they have changed that. Um, I believe they make you do $20. Yep, so $20 a day. Um, so you have to run at least $20 for this one. We're gonna be running $50 a day. Um, uh, so keep that in mind, 20 every day. You can set it up with a, uh, a schedule. We're gonna start it just right off as, as soon as we go and it continue it, run it continuously until I decide to turn it off. You can set it uh, you know, only to run for two week period if you'd like to uncheck this box right here. You can select specific times. This is great if you have a product that might sell better in the morning, afternoon, late at night, or if you have data that shows the hour of day that people might convert more. Um, but if you don't have that data, I just recommend keeping it all day. Uh, but something powerful that you could use or if you sell, like if you're a restaurant and you wanna advertise during lunch or dinner, uh, you can select those specific times. All right, and then now we are inside of the actual bid and optimization. For the optimization goal, the whole purpose of why we set up a conversion campaign is to optimize for the conversion. So we're gonna keep it there. Uh, you can optimize for clicks if you'd like. I've tested both of these together in my, my uh, testing. The conversion has done better most of the time. I always recommend you testing it yourself. This does, the thing that I've noticed is if the the website that I'm running does not have a lot of conversions previous um, and is not high, as high 
traffic, then clicks might be better because you're just not giving TikTok enough data to optimize for that conversion. If you're seeing enough conversions on a weekly basis, um, then you're probably better off to optimize for the conversion. And that's the reason why we're running this campaign. So we're going to keep it here on conversion. For this optimization pre uh, preferences, same thing here. We're going to keep this at the conversion level, optimizing for um, those conversions. Right, and then here we have the bid. Um, this is going to be something that you're going to want to test out. I've seen a lot of different results from the campaigns that I've run based on the bid. Typically, honestly, I start out with the suggestion that they give me. Um, if I'm not getting enough traffic, then I up the bid. Or if I am getting a really like a ton of traffic, but it's not converting, maybe I'll lower the bid or look at switching the audience or things like that. But to start off, if you don't have a lot of data based on the bid that you're looking for, I'd recommend just getting the suggestion one that they have and then seeing how it performs and then coming back and optimizing to there um, from that point. And next, if you come down here, they, they have these uh, more options for delivery type, recommend standard um, most of the time. You're not going to want to accelerate your budget or you're just going to blow through it and it's going to show to people who maybe aren't as qualified to see your ads. So definitely keep on the standard unless you have some sort of crazy budget that you need to, to get through and you need to show the ad, the, the ad as much as you can, but stick with standard. Um, if you're running UTM parameters, this is where you can add those in. Definitely recommend that for any of your campaigns to uh, track track them all the way through. All right, and then we are going to hit next here. And here we are inside of the actual creating of the ad um, area. So as you can see, it's very similar to Facebook setup where you have the campaign, ad group, and ad level. Um, if, if this is your first time running TikTok ads, I do highly recommend checking out this one minute guide right here uh, that shows you all of the, re the common reasons why ads get disapproved. Um, they have some really good examples on, you know, no exaggerated claims, um, no using uh, grammar, you know, wrong grammar or um, symbols or things like that inside of your captions. Uh, and, you know, obviously high quality images or high quality videos, um, just some things that are common sense, but some, some things that I saw and uh, it was good to know so that I upload those ads. You don't want to be constantly getting ads disapproved by TikTok and for whatever reason get banned from them. So definitely take the time. I mean, this takes literally one minute, one or two minutes to read. So do check that out before you upload your ads just to make sure you're complying with all of their policies. Um, and then once it's time to upload your ads, you simply need to click on this single video right here. You can add it from your library or you can take it right from your computer, which is what we're going to be doing. So now we have our ad uploaded. The last steps is to simply um, add some text into your, uh, into your, for your caption. Um, text must be between 12 and 100 characters, as you see here. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much everything. You can add your call to action. You can't customize a call to action, but you do have a lot to choose from. Basically everything that you would need, need um, to do inside of there. And then you hit submit and you have successfully created your TikTok ad campaign. Uh, in my experience, these the review process does take a little bit of time, so be patient on that. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.